But it was very interesting that none of them came through. They all had numerous problems that even though their hearts were started again, they were not able to keep the pressure up, the heart was very weak, there were multiple problems that shut down the organs. And in the midst of all of that, and talking with their families, talking with the doctors afterwards, we had one doctor stick themselves with a needle, so that means that they have to go through all kinds of testing and wonder what's going on in the months ahead. So I was talking with that doctor, there rolled by me on the first floor a gentleman. And uh, so he had his pack of cigarettes there and a lighter, so I knew he was going to the smoking shed, as it's called. <laughs> because nobody can smoke in the hospital, of course. So he says, um, you know, Father, I'm not Catholic, but I have a question for you. So he said, um, could we talk? And here I am trying to get back to the emergency room, although it was just to check on staff to see how they were doing. I said, yes. So in the big lobby, there's no one there on Saturday. We sat, the two of us, in this large lobby and talked. And he said, my son, my stepson, just died. He was sitting on the couch. He was 30 years old, and he just died. One minute he was watching the TV, the next minute he was dead. How could God do something like that to this young man? He had everything going for him. He had a child, he had a new bride. Why would God do something like that? I can't understand. Well, in the light of the readings, be prepared. We never know the day or the hour. Nowhere does it say that we're guaranteed of old age. And anybody who has taken a history course will know that the last um, generations, there was always a, a great amount of child mortality and young people passing away because of disease, etc. Nobody knows the day or the hour. So Jesus is always preparing us for this. So you have to say, it's not God's fault. God didn't do anything to hurt that young man. God cannot hurt. Why can't God hurt us? Is hurting somebody a good thing? No. Can God do a bad thing? Oh, that was quick. <laughs> You're banking on that one. <laughs> okay. God cannot do a bad thing because God's nature is all good. God is good. God is love. So God can't kill anybody like that. He can't smote them like that. All right? It would be totally against the nature of God. So what happens is it's not God's direct will. We call it God's permissive will. And the saints write about this, and Francis de Sales is probably the doctor of the church that most delineates the permissive will of God. How does the permissive will of God work when we need to be prepared for the day and the hour? What is the greatest gift outside of life? When we have life, what is the greatest gift God has ever given mankind? Okay. The second greatest gift that God has given to mankind. Okay, I forgot that one. <laughs> You've taught CCD, I see. All right, what's the second one? Well, that goes with salvation. It's sort of an alley right there. Free will. That's why Abraham's God was so different than every other little God. God gave us free choice. And he wants to trust us enough that we will always choose him and choose the good. But what can we also choose? The bad. Now, when we do that, could it have consequences for us? Either good or bad. Does it have consequences? All right. One of our patients that died chose to drink very heavily, and 
use drugs. He was just turned 60, and he looked like he was 100. And his 90-year-old mother came to see him before they had to turn off life support. Now, what did his choices bring him? And how do our choices affect other people? Did it affect his mother? Yes. All right. So it's like putting a big boulder and throwing it into a little pond. Everything's going to get splashed and the waves are going to hit every circle. Even the coves get a little something. So this is God's permissive will. He allows us to make our own choices. And we have to take the ramification of those choices. So when somebody who is 30 years old dies, there's a reason for that. So in an autopsy, they're going to tell you what's the reason. We're, we have a genetic code, right? We have DNA. And when our parents came together to make us in that very beautiful act of love, they brought matter together, didn't they? And what did God do? Okay, we're matter and the soul. The S word, yes. Very good. God breathes the soul in because we can't do that, can we? No, we can only put the matter together. But at the moment that matter comes together to form a life, God is already there breathing in the immortal soul, gifting us with that soul. But we also have all those other things that our generations before us have gifted us with. Right? Okay. Your blonde hair, your brown eyes, your height. <laughs> Okay? So we have all of that, and our health. Now when they ask me, what's your health history, I always say, I'm adopted, and they'll say, never mind. There is no health history, but you who have a succession of generations that are natural parents, you do. <coughs> so he could have had a bubble on his heart. He could have had an aneurysm because he ate potato chips all the time and drank Coke. And a little valve burst. We never know the day or the hour. So Jesus is always saying, this is the human condition. And I'm right in here with you. And no matter what happens to you, I'm there. Whether it's emotional, spiritual, or physical, I'm right there. But be prepared spiritually. 